Good afternoon. Welcome to another bulletin of Citycast. I'm Snehi Shah and I'm Apeksha Priya. Our top headlines are Farmers children are unable to avail scholarships due to unseeded bank accounts. Our reporter Arunima Bharadwaj brings us more on that. More than 5 lakh applications for scholarship to farmers children were received by the government in past one year. Quite a number of it could not be sanctioned since the applicants did not have their accounts seeded to their Aadhar card. I applied for scholarship and I applied for my account bank account to Aadhar card seeded to Aadhar card. ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಆದರೂ ಏನು ಸ ಅದಷ್ಟೇ ಸರ್ ಸ ಪರವಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಬೇಕು ಇನ್ನೂ ಏನು ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ನನಗೆ ಮುಂದೆ ಏನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕಂತ ತಿಳಿಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಟು ಟೆಂತ್ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ ಟೂ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಎನ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ರೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತ್ರೀ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟು ಎಲೆವೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಸೂವಿಂಗ್ the students did not get uh, any amount the other number is not linked or seeded to any bank uh, their data as in uh, stats might be different when compared to other combined uh, together maybe 30 35000 students could not be paid also for the post metric scholarships the government creates bank accounts for the students themselves 6,000 students ಆದಿತ್ಯಾಂಡೆಟ್ Autism Society of India says it is difficult to identify children with autism spectrum disorder in India due to lack of awareness and availability of government data. But what happens is uh, students who are on the severe or moderate needs they're uh, kind of asked to you know leave the school because the teachers are un- not in a position to handle them in the class because sometimes for students with moderate needs they might need a little bit more uh, trained professionals to handle them a report by spectrum a research institute for autism shows one in every 100 children under the age of 10 in india have autism there are five different types of autism spectrum disorder and it is the third most common disorder i was rejected in a park in hsr third sector just my child was pushing other child Uh, at the age of 3 and i was asked why do you bring such children outside to the park there, there is, is no insurance me yeah. autistic child goes to a hospital they claim you can't claim you know under the right of person with disability act 2016 responsibility has been cast upon the appropriate government to take effective measures to ensure that the person with disability including autism spectrum disorder enjoy their right equally with others However there is no government data available on the number of autistic patients or okay, chaotic to even come to or arrive to numbers because uh, first of all uh, we do not have a collective data in India going about you know children being diagnosed secondly not all cases are reported in neurology india says there is an urgent need to study the burden of autism spectrum disorder in india this is the pandey reporting for city cards thank you aditya Next up, we find students in the city returning to school a challenge. Our reporter Shreyashi Mukherjee talks to teachers and tells us why. The teachers in the schools of Bangalore witness a change in the learning pattern of the students. They say that children are not being able to cope with in-person offline classes. It's been a long time, so they don't want to concentrate on the children. So, they don't want to write more than they want to write. So, they don't want to change their masks in the masks. Teachers say that most of the students are not being able to deal with the academic pressure. Some students are breaking down in the classrooms and they suffer from anxiety attack. The parents too complain about the change in the behavior of their children. He is in eighth standard now. During the first lockdown, she was very eager to go back to her school. However, now like offline classes have become she finds excuses to be sir classes. She says it is becoming difficult for her to cope up with her studies the parents are worried 
that such behaviors will impact the career of their children. Child psychologists say that it is very important to give children time to adapt to the classroom environment as they had been away from it for a very long time. The children were doing online classes for a very long time because of which they developed severe social anxiety. Since they were away uh, from their classmates and doing everything through the screens in front of them, there was a gap in communication as well. Experts believe that school should not rush with the syllabus and should not overburden the students with homework. They also believe that the teachers should motivate the children instead of getting angry at them. This is Shresh Mukherjee reporting for CityCast. We take a short break. On the other side, we look at organ donations and how people respond to the need. Welcome back to CityCast. Karnataka has an increase in the number of people pledging their organs for donation. Our reporter Snehi Shah tells us more about the development. The number of people in Karnataka who have pledged their organs after their death has shot up over the previous year. Organ donations, especially kidney donations, have also witnessed a rise in numbers. Now the online pledging has been started from 2020. In 2020, uh, 45 has done. In 2021, 7,845. Uh, the donation has been increasing uh, by it, uh, after COVID. After Puneet Rajkumar uh, death and uh, after Sanchari Vijay, online pledging is more. Kidney donation has gone up the most in the last year. There are currently close to 4,000 people on the wait list for kidneys. While some people get kidneys from their families, most people have to depend on cadaver donations. She says they have been on the wait list for close to a year now. The wait list is anywhere between 1 and 4 years long depending on the blood group. A transplant coordinator explains the causes of delay in getting an organ. The waiting list is huge. Uh, after organ is harvested from the body, uh, police has to give the clarification and uh, post-mortem has to be done and a lot of legal issues post that. It takes uh, longer duration because of a lot of uh, activities which is involved in the back. He says families are too attached to take a call on donating organs in time. While there is positivity in the number of pledges going up, thousands still await an organ in time. This is Nehisha reporting for CityCast. Moving on to business news. More established companies in the city are turning investors and are helping startups raise funds. Our reporter Rakshita Kumar brings us more on this. National Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency of India recorded that out of the 44 Indian startups that entered the unicorn list last year, 38 of them were funded by enterprises that entered the unicorn club in the last decade. We started in 2018 and we, uh, we started looking out for fundraisers in the same year. And then we came across a smile group who gave us our first round of funding. According to a report by INC42, Indian startups have raised $38 billion last year, out of which almost $20 billion funds were yet alone raised by other Indian companies. We are a company that invests in the new startups that are looking for fundraisers. So we are the angel investors. Uh, we see the potential and the relevance of the firm in the future. Uh, the new firm has to go through seven steps in order to qualify for the funding. Enterprises are realizing the disruptive potential of startups and are thus partnering or investing in them. In India, this new concept of where other companies are trying to invest in new age companies, there's only one good thing that can come out of it is the experience that these uh, already established uh, unicorns have with themselves. Apart from that, it does help in you in the fundraising process. This boosts the entire startup ecosystem as founders who were before fund seekers are now the investors. This is Rakshita Kumar reporting for CityCast. While startup funding is increasing, there's still a glass ceiling for women in business. Our reporter Rashika Kashyap tells us how the number of women on board of companies is still low. India ranks lower in the number of women in decision-making positions compared to other democracies. A report by Deloitte states that women hold only 17.1% board seats in India, despite accounting half of the country's working population. Women agree that it's harder to be accepted in higher positions. It's very difficult for me to uh, get people to do things because they feel that, you know, I am a lady, so it's easier for them to get away with. 
The Karnataka State Commission for Women states that the reason for this is discrimination and harassment at work. While the number of women in decision-making positions has improved over the years, they continue to be low in comparison to the workforce. Women invite women on the board just because it's nothing. It's just that they think that, you know, what is a woman going to do? Yeah. Is there a particular reason? It's the same taboo, you know. Uh, what will a woman contribute? India has fallen to 148th position in Global Gender Index in 2021. Though we speak a lot about freedom for women, etc., we still have the same mindset as, uh, you know, earlier, like uh, we still follow the patriarchal mindset. The Karnataka State Commission of Women aims to have more awareness programs for working women this year. This is Rishika Kash. The recyclers in the city do not have enough e-waste to process, while only a fraction of e-waste gets recycled. Our reporter Shubhangi Mishra tells us more on this. Sahas. An enterprise running since 20 years for zero waste says not more than 30% of e-waste gets recycled. Data from the Karnataka State Pollution Control Board shows more than 1 lakh metric tons of e-waste is generated in Karnataka. Somewhere around 17 to 24% is getting recycled. The rest of all the e-waste is getting dumped and recycled in an informal sector, they don't follow any guidelines. They will recover whatever they want, they will dump it, which we cannot consider as a recycling. Officials say that out of 146 dismantlers in the city, only 86 remains operational. The recyclers are not receiving enough e-waste, which has impacted their revenue badly, forcing them to shut down. More than 50%, 80 sector, and they are mean contributors. Hmm? Established collection bins. If we get very good response, we are going to increase that numbers with other partners. Bengaluru contributes to approximately 80% of e-waste in Karnataka. Due to the unauthorized recycling, hazardous substances like mercury, lead and other heavy metals imposes hazard to the environment. E-waste, we don't have one. What they have is some crazy uh, e-waste bin, e-waste collection centers spread across the city which people are not aware of where they are. Experts say that the center and the state pollution control board should come up with strong audits for the informal sector and the recyclers to strengthen the e-cycling process in the city. This is Shubhangi Mishra reporting for CityCast. We will be right back after a short break. Welcome back to CityCast. The butterfly population of the Garden City sees a steady increase despite rapid urbanization. Our reporter Vinaya with that. Increase in rainfall and urban vegetation over the past few years subsequently increased the number of butterflies in Bangalore. Uh, we are having a much more wetter uh, Bangalore as compared to the earlier years. The rainy season get ex gets extended by almost like 3-4 um, months. So you're mm -hmm. seeing a lot more butterflies which otherwise were not found other than in Western Ghat. Now okay. trying to trying to come in and you know also spread here. Bengaluru lies in an important transitional zone between Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats which makes it a favourite spot for migratory butterflies also. We've had uh, a lot of interest over the last few years in terms of the number of people watching. Butterfly. You've had more people come into the hobby, more people observing a very less observed creature, which means that you know there will be more records added. Butterflies are an important indicator of a healthy ecosystem. There are around 179 different species of butterflies in Bangalore. Uh, in Banergata, India's uh, first uh, butterfly park. Uh, it's a, it is a very uh, unique one. You make, it, they make them hatch. Uh, in our uh, laboratory and uh, we release uh, butterflies uh, nearly 200 to 300 uh, butterflies per day. As scientists say, Bengaluru with its unique climate and geographical location is a natural home for butterflies. This is Vinaya reporting for CityCast. We end our bulletin with a story on digital invites. Wedding bells are ringing and so is the business for digital invitation cards. Our reporter Apeksha Priya tells us how this leaves some businesses struggling. This wedding season, people are switching from printed invitation cards to digital invitation cards. Couples share invitations on social media. The digital card does not cost anything, whereas the practical cards cost a lot. It is also a hassle-free. 
we contributed in saving the environment also, saving my money also, saving my time also. In this mobile world, in the digital world, it's very easy. You not only in one thing, you save on many things. The digital invitation card making is a cheap process compared to printed ones. However, the wedding card businesses face a loss. So, look, digital invitation card बनवा रहे हैं या video invitation card बनवा रहे हैं ज़्यादा। आखिर के पांच-छह wedding season से हम लोग के यहाँ बहुत कम customer आ रहे हैं। Fifty percent earning इस business में कम हो गया है हमारा। कुछ महीनों में शायद digital invitation card design करें तो business वापस से सही हो जाए। the pandemic made things even worse for these printing shops. It's a great medium to earn because you need graphic design in every field and good design is in demand. As the world moves ahead, some traditional crafts are getting left behind in the pixelated dust. This is Apeksha Priya reporting for CityCast. Thank you for watching CityCast. For more stories, log on to www.citycast.in.